Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel today. My name is Christian and today we're back with another concert review. Last night I went and saw Moose Blood play in Sydney. It was fucking amazing and I just had to talk about it. I haven't done a concert review in a while. I've only ever done one other one before and that was for the Bring Me The Horizon show with Architects. Um, you'll have noticed if you watch that review that I had clips of some of the songs. I didn't do that last night um, because it was a tiny venue. I didn't want to be that guy who got his phone out and blocked someone's view. And as well as that, I thought to myself, if I wasn't doing YouTube, would I get my phone out and record a song? And my answer was no. So um, I just wanted to stay in the moment. I didn't want to block someone else's view and ruin their experience. So there's going to be no clips in this video, but I'm sure you can find some if you go. Well, I mean, you're on YouTube now, so I'm sure you can find some live clips of them from last night, but I was hesitant going into this show because I'd seen how long they were going to play for, it was only 45 minutes, and so I was nervous they were only going to play like eight songs or so and then get off stage, and luckily I was pleasantly surprised. I'm glad I went in with those low expectations for the length that they were going to play. I had high expectations that they were going to be, you know, really, really good live. But I was worried they weren't going to play very many songs and I was, I was really glad to see that they played a lot more than I expected them to. But let's get into the supports now. I only saw two of them. I'm pretty sure it was uh, Harbours and Blue Velvet that I saw. It might have been Flipside, I'm not sure because they never said their name. But yeah, the three supports were Harbours, Blue Velvet and Flipside. Just three bands from Australia pop punk style bands and uh, I wasn't really fussed about seeing any of them purely because Australian pop punk is very very average and they all sound exactly the same and when we walked in the band that were playing it was either Flipside or Blue Velvet. They were exactly what I expected and they were nothing special and just all the generic parts of pop punk in one band the only different thing was that they used a keyboard so they weren't anything special and then Harbours came on and they were a lot better than I was expecting them to be um, once again they were that just typical pop punk sound but thankfully their singer could actually sing and here's the problem that I had with their singer though he could sing really really well but he did that cliche pop punk thing of modern era pop punk where he, he added in those screamed vocals for absolutely no reason instead of hitting higher notes and it really just it took away from some of their integrity it was just like they were pandering it would have been better to just see him sing clean because his clean voice was a lot better and you could hear that he could hit the notes when he sung clean he usually hit higher notes than the ones he screamed it was just it was just weird it didn't make sense for the sound that they had and just felt like it was just them trying to pander to an audience and so um, they were decent, they had some good songs uh, I think I'll check out their EP or album, whatever they've got out, I'll go and check them out but um, yeah they were decent so they surprised me and then we went into Moose Blood and they played an amazing set they played a lot from the first album, they played a lot from Blush they, played, they didn't play some songs that I really really wanted to see like Sulk, I would have loved to have seen Sulk uh, and um, but other than that they played an amazing amazing set with a lot of amazing songs and it was right from the first note that I knew that this was going to be amazing and that was because they opened up with Bukowski perfect song to open up a set gets everyone right in the mood straight away and that song sounds absolutely massive live speaking of massive live the way they opened this set as I said opened with Bukowski but they just came straight out of the gates with three absolute bangers that any other band would play any three of those songs as their last song because it would be their best song. And so they opened up with Pikowski, then went straight to Honey, and then went straight into Glow. It was just a perfect way to open up the set, and it the set never hit a low note from there on. Sorry, there's like a tiny spider here that I'm gonna grab. That was weird, really tiny spider but you probably couldn't see it. So let me run through. So Bukowski, Honey, and Glow, and then they went to Boston, which was fucking awesome to see them play. Uh, they played I Hope You're Missing Me, which was awesome. It was good to see some of the deeper cuts from the first album get played. Like they, you'll see as this rundown goes on, they played a lot of deep cuts that they don't usually play in their support sets when they're you know in the US and 
when they're playing, you know, in the UK. They haven't done headline shows for Blush in the UK yet, I don't think. I could be wrong. So if I'm wrong, just correct me and call me an idiot in the comment section. Yeah, whatever. That's standard thing. But, you know, um, I hope you're missing me. It sounded absolutely awesome. Swim Down is a perfect live song. Just the way it opens up with those hi-hats and then adding in the snare. It just builds the song really, really well. It sounds absolutely great. As I said, this was in a really small venue, which is really, really cool. Everyone was cramped in, pushed up against each other. It was sweaty. Uh, there wasn't much moshing going on. There was jumping up and down, but I'm kind of in mosh retirement now because I have a fucking bad back. So um, I stood at the back with a couple of friends of mine and uh, it was perfect way to see this concert. The sound was absolutely awesome. I commend their sound guy because I've been to that venue before and it hasn't had good sound and uh, it was absolutely perfect last night. Everything sounded great. The drums could have been a little bit louder I think but other than that everything was absolutely awesome. Uh, then they went to, as I said, Swim Down and they went to Gum which was really really awesome. Uh, a, a song that I knew was going to be in their set, but one that was welcome anyway. And then they went into a song that I did not expect them to play at all. They played Shimmer, which is a really, really emotional song from Blush. Really, really great to see live. It's great to see Eddie Brewerton sing absolutely phenomenally. Uh, I wasn't sure how he was going to sound because I've only seen a couple of live clips of him. And um, he absolutely smashed it. He's there were so many moments where it was just him and a guitar and it just showed what a powerful vocalist he is. It's why he was in my most underrated vocalist video that I did with Infinity on Hannah. Um, he's absolutely great live so it was really cool um, to see him do what he does best. And the whole band were really on point. Everybody played really, really well. The drumming was absolutely on point even though some of it was lost in the mix sometimes. You could see that he was absolutely smashing it and you could hear it as well. Just sometimes some of the Tom Fields and stuff got lost. Um, then they played uh, Sway, which I didn't expect at all either. Um, I expected them to play something like Salt before they played something from further down the album like Sway. But that sounded absolutely great. I love that chorus. It was a big, big sing-along. There were so many moments in this set where the crowd would overpower Eddie singing and he'd have to move away from the mic and just let the crowd sing. And that was such a great moment because he even said it during the set. They weren't sure about these shows. They were coming halfway across the world. It's only their second album. The only other time they've been here was supporting uh, a band at the same venue. And uh, I think they were kind of blown away with the response that they got. They'd played two shows that day. They had two shows at that same venue. They had an all ages. And then I was at the uh, 18 plus show. And they were both sold out. And I, it's, it's really promising to see a band that are so so good for the pop punk genre get recognized from the fans and have a full venue so that was really really awesome to see uh then they went to another song that they played a lot of songs that i didn't expect them to play and they did it like two song banger of i hope you're miserable and cherry i didn't expect them to play either of those songs they were absolutely great to see especially cherry i love that song it's a perfect way to open up that first album and just really great to see, once again, Eddie singing his heart out, him and a guitar for most of those two songs. Just sounded absolutely great. And then they finished off the set. There was no encore for this show, and they finished off the set with Knuckles. Perfect way to close out the set. That chorus is absolutely massive. It's a massive, massive sing-along to finish off a set, and just the perfect way to end a night. And it's, I haven't seen a pop punk band be this good live in a very, very long time. The last pop punk band I saw to be this good live was All Time Low, and that was a couple of years ago when they were in Australia. And um, it was really great to be back seeing songs that are just really fun live and having a band that are so tight, so just together and playing their songs to the best of their abilities. And it's honestly sounded just as good as the record. Eddie sung absolutely great, added some things here and there in his vocal lines that were different from the record, which is really cool. I love when vocalists do that. It's always good to see a band not just copy and paste from the record live, to actually do some new things live. And they definitely did that. All the songs sounded great. The whole set was absolutely awesome. And it was still 45 minutes long. And it was crazy that it only went for that long. I could have seen them, like the amount of songs that they played, 
how good would it have been to see them just play both records? <laughs> um, but, you know, they played an amazing set. Would have been good to see Spring as well. I love that song. Uh, when he was introducing Cherry, he said, this song means a lot to me. And I really thought he was going to jump into Spring, but he jumped into Cherry, which is, I mean, it's just as good. But would have been good to see uh, Spring and would have been good to see Sulk. But other than that, absolutely amazing. Definitely, if you are going to see Moose Blood, you're not going to be disappointed. You should go and see them. I know they're supporting a day to remember in the UK. Go and see that because they will... They're playing massive venues there and they will blow the roof off those massive venues. These songs would sound absolutely great in arenas. And uh, I think they only just finished up a US run, so I'm not sure if they're doing a US run soon, but if they are, go and see them. They're incredible live. Their set is flawless. There's not a weak moment on it. So definitely go and do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm trying to do it with no cuts. I just do a sit down and just talk about an amazing night. Uh, and yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I've got more reviews coming out next week. I've got covers coming out. Um, I just did a review of the new U86 record, so go and check that out. And hey guys, thanks for watching my videos today. Please hit subscribe down below and I'll see you next time. Fresh Currents.